Driving straight is the bane of every single FLL team. Whenever I hear a team come back from a run that they didn't get their highest on, they always say, if only our robot drove straight that one time, or, oh, we would have gotten our maximum score if only we drove straight. There's a few different solutions to the problem of robot drifting, uh, such as like gyro sensors, such as motor encoders, and sometimes you really just have to pray that your robot drives straight. So in this episode of F My FLL Must Have series, we're going to be discussing the most basic way of solving motor drift, which is through the motor sensors. Let's get right into it. Before we do anything with the motors, we have to look at a new-ish block. You should be familiar with the concept by now. So go to your sensor tab and go to motor rotation. It looks like a plus sign, what you see on the motor essentially, and a rotation. So here we have a similar layout. You should be very familiar with this because of the color, measure color block, and we say we have the exact same functions essentially. We have measure, degrees, rotations, and current power, compare degrees, rotations, current power, and lastly, but, and most importantly, we have the reset block. What this does is it essentially measures, of course, the degrees. We're going to first use the reset function as normal on both of the motors. The reason why you want to do this is if you check out the port view section, whenever you move the robot, even when you're trying to like set it up, it will change the degrees or rotations that your robot is currently at. And so by resetting it, what we do is if I run this program, both of these will just be set to zero. That's essentially what we want because we want them to be even. Now look, we have them both set to zero, which is perfect. You can do this under any circumstance. You just want them to be equal. You want them to be zero. So now we're going to answer the question of how we're going to drive straight. We're going to drive straight by seeing if the B and C motors are on the same page. So if they're moving forward and their degrees are the exact same, we don't need to correct it. However, if one motor is moving faster than the other, let's just say that B motor is moving 100 degrees, whereas C motor is only detecting that it's moved 50 degrees. We want to correct in that in our program right now. How are you going to do this? First of all, you need to find the difference, which means a math block. I'm going to drag out a math block and I'm going to set it to advanced because we might need this in the future. I'm going to set it to A minus B for now. Next, we want to actually find our values from our motors. And I'm going to do that by using the two blocks and going to measure degrees. Now, here's the tricky part. We want to find the difference, um, but we also want to do something else. We want to have the correct correction, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to do this for now, and I'm going to explain it coming back. I'm going to plug C into A, and I'm going to plug the B motor into B. So we have C minus B. Next, we have the difference coming out of this, and we want to plug it into the move steering block. Plug it in, and I'm going to set this to on. Lastly, you want to move all of that into a loop block, because as you probably know, this move command only lasts like a millisecond. Your robot isn't actually going to move very far. All right, so now we've written the base code for it. Of course, we want to control on an FLL table how far we want this to go. As you can see right now, it's on unlimited, which means that we don't actually know how far it's going to go. It's just going to keep on running until the battery dies or you actually exit the program itself, which obviously you can't do. So what you want to do is you want to be able to control how far it goes. Now, because we already have our motor rotation reset here, we can safely use the motor rotation sensor, and I'm going to set it to rotations. So, of course, change the port to B or C. It doesn't really matter because they're moving at the same speed and the same distance. And so now we can control the amount of rotations or degrees, if you choose to use it, that your robot is going to drive. Let's just assume I want my robot to drive two rotations. You just change that number to two and you're all good. Now what we actually want to do is we want to make a my block out of this. We don't want to be copy pasting this whole long code into our final program or into our any like runs that we need to do because remember this is just a replacement for the move tank block. The move tank block is a very short and like very very easy to uh, place block in. It's very small. It's very simple. We want to do the same thing, so obviously we're going to make a my block out of this. Select everything except for the start button, go to tools, my block builder, and here's your my block. Now we have two parameters that we want here and that are open basically. We have our speed right here for our driving and we also have our rotations. So you want to set two parameters right here. I'm going to first name the my block drive straight 
and I'm just going to choose an icon. I'm actually just going to use the move tank icon because we're replacing the move tank block. Go to your first parameter and you want to, because this is now speed, you want to choose, uh, go to parameter icons and choose a speed icon. I'm just going to use the dash here. Next for parameter setup, just type in speed. You know what to do. Input, number, change this to 50 because you want your default speed to be 50 and turn it to a slider. I'm actually just going to keep it as is. Everything is all good. Now go to your second one and this one is going to be your rotations. It's going to be plugged in here. Obviously name it rotations or degrees if you choose to do that. I'm using rotations here. Don't worry about it and just keep it as is. As for parameter icons, obviously just choose one that matches yours. I'm just going to put a rotations right here. And we're done. This is our my block. So it will open a new one called drive straight. This is your my block. Of course, plug in speed right into your loop block right in here. That's going to control your speed. And next, plug in your degrees or rotations into the back uh, port of your loop. And now our my block is fully operational. Go to your program, snap it back, and now we can control the speed and the rotations. If I want it at 100 and I want it to drive three rotations, we can see that it should plug in. Your 100 speed goes into here, and your three rotations goes into your loop. Everything is perfect. Your program is now done. So this week on FLL Must Haves, we wrote a program that allows you to drive a certain amount of rotations, one that you have to control. Now, this is basically supposed to replicate our move tank block right here. So now, how do we replicate a slightly more complicated program? Like for example, this one that I'm gonna write on screen right now. Remember the program where we drove forward infinitely, waited for a certain color sensor value, and then stopped? How do we get that now on our robot? It doesn't work with this program because we can't plug in infinity, and if it went for an infinite amount of times, we can't stop it. So next week, we're going to dive into the issue of how we can do that, how we can replicate this program. Spoiler alert, we're going to be using the loop interrupt in that video. Tune in next time for how you write a program which you can actually control, not through rotations or degrees, but through actual sensors, and how you make that drive straight as well. Until next time, and until next week, be sure to check out my channel for more educational EV3 content, and be sure to like and subscribe, it helps me a lot. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.